today, um, today we have with us, we have Rachel, um, Rachel from Gig Buddies. Hi, Rachel. Hello. And Rachel's going to talk about um, the wonderful Gig Buddies um, and tell you all about it and let you know what they do and what it involves and how you can join as a volunteer. Uh, so over to you, Rachel. Thanks. Fantastic. So Gig Buddies in Bradford has been running for the last two and a half years. Oh, sorry, just excuse me. Um, and we have been supporting people with a learning disability and or autism across the Bradford region. Uh, so that's anywhere with the Bradford postcode. So you can imagine that's quite a big area. So from Ilkley to uh, Queensbury, uh, we've got Skipton, Shipley, wherever, and obviously Central Bradford as well. Um, so we are we are funded by Bradford Council and Mencap is the organisation that runs the project um, and I obviously coordinate that um, and at the moment we've been looking for volunteers to support people with a learning disability um, on virtually because obviously we, we can't go out at the moment uh, but usually we'd um, ask our volunteers to volunteer twice a month and support someone uh, to access nightlife so that could be absolutely anything it could be going to a gig it could be going bowling it could be going late night shopping it's just something that is on an evening because all the fun stuff happens after five you know a lot of people with a learning disability uh, are socially isolated don't necessarily have have someone in their lives that isn't paid to be there and you know when you're in your 20s your 30s you don't want to be going out with some, your carer, your mum or dad, your sister. You want to be going out with a friend, you know, someone that's got a shared interest, someone that's got a passion for something that you're interested in as well. Um, and it's, it's a really flexible, fun way of volunteering. Um, so, like I said, twice a month, it's entirely up to you and your buddy when that is. It could be that you go on a Tuesday night, could be that you go and meet on a Sunday. You know, it's entirely up to you. Um, and usually we would run socials as well. So we usually would run socials twice a month. So that's a really nice opportunity for people to get together, whether that's volunteers, people with a learning disability. Um, we would usually go to a bar or a pub, have a bit of a chat or do an activity together. Uh, but obviously at the moment that's not all happening. Um, so we are doing stuff virtually. Um, it's not ideal uh, as, you know, everyone is in the same boat at the moment, but we have been um, doing our volunteer training online, so on a Zoom call. We've been obviously getting all the processes done, so filling out the forms, DBSs, and references and that sort of thing. And we've been supporting people throughout that process. Um, and then we've been kind of supporting our pairs, the gig buddy pairs that we've still kind of got running, up and running, doing socials. So we do socials twice a month on Zoom. So you can imagine there's been all sorts of wacky and fun things that we've been coming up with. So things like uh, we did a, a Halloween special last night. Um, we've, done, <laughs> we've done karaoke, we've done Disney themed ones, we've done uh oh what was the the best one actually was we had a dinner party so we all got dressed up and had a dinner party um all sorts of stuff just to kind of keep people engaged um and just have a little bit of a fun time really um and also coffee mornings because you know a lot of services a lot of things that people are usually doing aren't happening at the moment as well um so just things to keep people entertained during the day um yeah i think that's that's pretty much it really um Obviously, kind of, there is only so much we can do at the moment, and we are looking at doing uh, matching meetings. So usually, we'd we take uh, a volunteer and a person with a learning disability, match them up. We'd go for a coffee or you know a drink somewhere, and we'd sort of chat through what sort of things they, they're interested in doing, and get them set up so they can actually start going out in the community. Uh, we're we're looking at doing that online, uh, which isn't it's not ideal, but we're there again to support kind of all the way with that yes yeah yes yeah um i know there's some this is a bit of a practical question really i know there's yeah. some people i know there's um we are allowed in bradford to meet up outdoors as long as it's mm. uh, as long as not as one's as long as it's not um for a meal or anything but we can go for yeah. a walk um so if people wanted to meet in person they could potentially go 
um, and meet them in a park or, you know, for a bit of a stroll. Uh, if you wanted to get some face-to-face -face time with them. Because I think if you if you meet online, it's okay, but face-to-face -face you really get, um, it's a little bit more connected, isn't it? It is, it is, absolutely. If people are, if people are prepared to do like little walks on the canal or, uh, you know, things like that, uh, or just meet in a park for a bit of a wander around for some fresh air and company, um, that that could be arranged because that's allowed isn't it is that sort of thing that's yeah so we i mean we've been obviously monitoring like everyone else monitoring the the sort of the tier system and how you know kind of that impacts us and impacts bradford itself um so at the moment we're um supporting our gig buddies and people you know kind of ones that aren't matched up or just on the project to meet for a socially distanced walk yeah. um, Obviously, it's not really, it's not really gig buddies. It's not about staying up late, but it's it's the best thing that we can do at the moment. And like you said, that, that social interaction is so important, that face-to-face -face time. Mm -hmm. um, so at the moment, any kind of meetups with our gig buddies is done with myself present. Yeah. Our gig buddies, we go through the guidelines with them. We've created our own guidelines and also do um, a risk assessment that we do every time. Uh, just to check, you know, that people are up to date, everything, they've not got any ongoing health issues or obviously symptoms um, of COVID. Um, and then we we support them and arrange a time for them to meet. So we had a lovely uh, socially distanced walk on Monday with uh, one of our big buddy pairs um, around Roberts Park. That was really nice. Mm. Um, and they really enjoyed that. So had a, you know, got a takeaway coffee, just had a bit of a stroll and I sort of gave them a bit of time to, you know, have a chat and catch up because they're not seeing each other since February. Well, they're seeing each other online, but they're not seeing each other since February. And it was, it was really nice for them to connect again. And they'd, they'd already got a date in the diary when they could FaceTime. Um, so yeah, it's really, really positive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we'd be on hand as well. Uh, we wouldn't just kind of like say, oh, well, you're going to meet this person at this point. We'd be there as well just to support um, in doing that walk. Okay, that's cool. cool. Do they need... Um... Do they need DBS check then to to volunteer? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. What does that in, what does that entail? Just quickly. Um, yeah. Because it sounds like something that might be hard to do, but if people haven't had one before, they might think, "Oh, that's going to stop me," or "It's going to take too long." Or can you? Yeah. What What are the? How do you help them with that? Yeah. yeah no worries. So part of the the training process, we send out to you as well to the potential volunteers. Um, all the information that they need to to use to get onto the DBS system. So uh, for MENCAP's DBS system, it is simply just a link that they click on and then they can fill out their details. So obviously name, date of birth and, and kind of where they've been living for the, the past, I can't remember, so many years. Um, and then we ask them to send us copies of their identification at, um, online, just because obviously we can't meet in person. Um, and then we can fill that in for them and they'll get the DBS sent out in the post. So it's relatively, it's relatively simple to do. The DBS, the time of kind of obviously receiving it does, you know, how long is a piece of string? It could take a day, it could take a couple of weeks. Um, and we'll get a notification when we know it's going to be sent out. Um, and then we'll arrange a time where we can have a social distance walk and just have a quick look at it. Um, you know, double check your ID as well. Um, so it's it's not too difficult and um, it can feel a little bit daunting I think you know when you say to people it's a you know it's a police check they think yeah and what they're going to find even if you haven't done anything you feel a little bit yeah. nervous don't you sometimes yeah. um, but you know we're, we're really lucky that the, the MENCAP DBS um, guys they're super friendly super easy to to do and we, we do all the background stuff so you don't really have to do more. that's good that's good um, and even if um, even if they've got something on there that they might have, like, for example, if they've been protesting and arrested for protesting, uh, some of our students might have been, yeah. but if they want to volunteer, that, would, that shouldn't affect their ability to volunteer with vulnerable adults. Cause... No, 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 definitely. Obviously, you know, there is there are certain things that will kind of maybe hinder your DBS uh, application or we may kind of feel that isn't it's a bit too serious to volunteer. But, um, like you said, there's no reason why anyone can't volunteer. Um, and it might be that, you know, if there is something on there that we do take the process a little bit slower, so we don't match you up straight away, but we invite you to socials, we get to know you a little bit more. Um, but yeah, no reason why anyone can't volunteer. Thanks, Rachel. I'm just going to 
Um, my, my son's just got home. I'm sorry. Come here, come here. Just say hello. Um, I'll just... Hi. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> hello. Hi. How are you? Uh, sorry, it's just got some messages. Are you okay? <laughs> Can you see her face? There we are. How was forest school? Hmm? Bye. Oh. Did you have a good day? <laughs> He's like, who I you? love your hair. Your hair's really cool. <laughs> I'm a very silly lady, that's who I am. <laughs> right, I'm going to finish, finish my meeting now. Mum, well, I've got a pay trade that's going to turn into a little bit note. Oh, have you? Okay, thank you. It's, it's going to turn into a litter picking note. Got engineers in our hands. Wow! That's cool. Okay. Right, Robin, I've got to carry on. See you later. <laughs> bye bye, Danny. Yeah. Danny's going to sort you out. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Great. So, so DBS, no DBS is fine um, and sorted. Um, yeah. Easy, so that's okay. Um, and yeah, if you have any previous things, don't worry because it's probably, uh, we can always chat about it, can't you? If it comes up as something. Yeah, like definitely. There's always fl this flexibility and we have had situations in the past where, you know, people have had things come up, um, but it is, you know, the conversation is there to be had and, and we work really close obviously with the DBS team and our volunteering team as well and we you know we can chat through the process and, and make sure there is some way of of getting you to volunteer and be part, be part of the project. Excellent I'm just going to plug my my headphones in so that um there we go. No worries. If it happens in the background it won't if anything happens in the background it won't affect the meeting. Okay, okay right so um so what's the training like? You mentioned training a little bit. Um, is it is it like mm -hmm. a, how quick or slow or long is it? And how does it work at the moment? Yeah. Um, so usually we meet up in person um, and we tend to try and um, do it in a nice group so that people can bounce ideas off each other. Um, and it just feels like you're a little bit part of part of the project and part of kind of volunteering with us. I mean, obviously at the moment, you know, again, it's, it's not ideal, uh, but we are offering that over Zoom. Um, we have been doing it one-to-one -one at the moment, uh, just because obviously, you know, we haven't had as many volunteers through as we would would have liked, um, yeah. just, just the way it is. So we do it over Zoom, we kind of share a PowerPoint and it's usually about an hour that we do it. So yeah. we talk a little bit about MenCap and MenCap's kind of, um, ethos and what Mencaps, um, you know, wants to achieve as an organisation. Um, then we talk about Stay Up Late, which is a charity that started Gig Buddies, and just about Gig Buddies in Bradford, um, how to be a Gig Buddy, you know, kind of like barriers and what a learning disability is. And we do some sort of activities as well together, just to get your kind of brain thinking about it. Um, and then we do a little bit of the heavy stuff, which is safeguarding, uh, which we you know we it's a lot nicer in person but unfortunately it just has to be done um and then a little bit about expectations and and kind of things that are great about volunteering with gig buddies yeah. as well so yeah 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 so um so reliability <laughs> like the reliability being a big thing for students so getting getting them to be um on par yeah and communicating well um yeah a lot of our students are uh, very lovely and a lot of them are very keen and what happens is though is that um through the year you probably know this very well is that um is that in about in november like mid-november they get given a load of assignments a lot of people and then um, mm. and then they have time to do those before the Christmas holidays and then they have two weeks off where they might go home and then after that in January they have exams so they might be well in the flow mm. and all of a sudden these things kind of come into their life that make life very busy um, how would you how mm. would you um, deal with that get around that as um as a coordinator with them what, how mm. would you support them through that and how can they can they carry on volunteering but through that how what what happens there yeah no no definitely that's a really good question it's, it's really tricky when there are certain, you know, certain times or, you know, certain things happen, you know, you might have something that's happened in your personal life and, and volunteering is just, just too much and you can't commit. And I think that's r really important to sort of just to, to keep in the back of your mind, really. Um, mm -hmm. It is tricky. You know, we all have stuff going on and, you know, it can't, it's just the way it is really. I think the communication has got to be there. That's a really big key 
with the whole thing mm. just just speak to me and if you can't commit to meeting with your gig buddy then and we can look at either rematching them <laughs> or we could you know just take a bit of a break you know it, you don't have to meet twice a month it could be that that month particularly there's a lot going on and you can only manage one one meeting for an hour um but just yeah just keep communicating yeah, That's yeah. The key. but also communicate with your buddy as well because yeah, yeah. you know at the end of the day we are you are volunteering with a person and and they have their own expectations of you so just just keep that communication open I've got to go. the key. Robin, I've got, I'm in a meeting I've got to go okay uh so um so what you're saying is it's all possible but they just need to let you know what's happening for them and keep yeah yeah open. yeah that's okay and that's all right definitely and they yeah, yeah definitely cool, cool. Okay. we want this this volunteering to be fun at the end of the day and, and gig buddies we can't really do the project without volunteers they're the, mm. they're the key mm. thing it's got to work both ways they've got to enjoy what's going on participants have got to enjoy what's going on it's yeah yeah it's, yes that's right yeah. works. excellent okay right i've got to get rid of a child just go on robin go go be with daddy well, if you sit on my knee if you sit on my knee you can't wriggle okay you've just got to sit still and your drink needs to go over there right okay couple more questions um I think that's prob actually that's probably it sound you've answered quite a lot of things the only the next question though is how do they apply how do they get involved who do they speak to what do they do Excellent. next yeah, yeah no worries so obviously the link is um uh, on the bradford uni uh, volunteering page yes that's bradford uni um, that's bradford uni su.co.uk forward slash volunteering and if you go to the volunteering opportunities you'll find it there because it's been newly added and also uh the best things to do those register if you're a student um go to the volunteering registration page it takes about 10 minutes there'll be loads of questions about your, what you want to do what kinds of things you'd like to do and what you want to get involved with and then it will tailor the answers towards um the things that you've put so if you're interested in working with people with disabilities and adults and um and you're sociable um then then you'll get big buddies as one of the one of the answers um so um and you can also you can email rachel if you want to what's what do you want to tell us your email address if they want to yes, yeah yeah so questions? it's uh rachel berry hyphen the globus at mencap.org.uk which is a bit of a, a bit of a mouthful um or you can email gigbuddies at mencap.org.uk as well could you just spell the, the go the globus bit for them of course okay well i'll spell the whole thing because my my um i was gonna say my maiden name my um first name has got an extra a in it so it's r-a-c-h-a-e-l dot berry which is b-e-w-r-y hyphen the globus z-g-l-o-b-i-s at mencap.org.uk Thanks, Rachel. And if and if they want, if you want any help with um, accessing volunteering in general, or if you're feeling shy and you want a university person to speak to, or if you just have any general questions, then you can email me. I'm Roz, and my email address is r.j.coulton, which is c-o-u-l-t-o-n at bradford.ac.uk. Um, and or you'd look on the website, look on our website, there's the union website, and you'll find how to contact me. Um, so yeah, just get involved. It's really simple and easy and quick, and it sounds like really nice fun flexible easy interesting volunteering where you get to do some fun stuff with different people and uh, get out of the academic bubble just come and do something fun in the yeah, community definitely. and connect with other people and uh, yeah. make your life more interesting yeah. absolutely yeah. And, and give something back at the same time really important. yeah fantastic oh thank rachel thank you for joining me today it's really nice to see you yeah, you too um, okay and i think i think robin wants to say goodbye as well say goodbye robin Bye. Bye, we've got to go see you later Bye. Bye.